Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today I want to talk to you about something that's been on my mind for a while and that is my complete and destructive addiction to social media and how I've had a lot of success at getting rid of it. Lately I've discovered that this is a problem for a lot of people and that's news to me. I thought I was very alone in this but lately I posted on my Instagram about how I finally deleted TikTok and I asked a question, um, do you think TikTok is good for mental health? And I was surprised to, say, to see that absolutely nobody said it was good for mental health. And in the next question I asked, which platform hurts you the most? And I, again, I was surprised to see a lot of people actually said Instagram, even though I was on Instagram posting this. So I think that goes to show that a lot of people have a problem letting go of social media and have a problem with just addiction to social media. I've known for a while now that it's been a major problem for me and I definitely had a few red flags over the years telling me that I needed to take a step back. One of them is that I would be angry if I went somewhere, even if I had a good time and I didn't have a really nice photo to post to social media. And I remember actually having a little fight with my husband on our honeymoon um, because I had worn this new dress and I just couldn't get a nice photo in it and I wanted one for Instagram and so I made us walk around even though my shoes were uncomfortable trying to get this nice photo that I could post on Instagram. Over the years I've also posted photos where the day was awful, it was a terrible day but if I had a nice photo then I would post it anyway and just kind of pretend to the world that my life was better than it was and that's a lie and we're spreading these lies on social media that you know every day and every outing is perfect and that's just not true all right enough about all of that negative stuff let's talk about how i managed to get rid of my addiction to social media and some strategies that you could use as well if you also would like to do that what worked for me best is actually a two-pronged strategy. The first one is to take time away from my phone completely, and the other is to limit social media availability on my phone. So let's talk about the first one. I am somebody who has ADHD and so I fidget, and if my phone is available, I will use my phone and somehow I will end up on social media. So the one of the best ways to get rid of my social media addiction was to not have my phone at certain times. The best thing that worked is to leave it in my car. So for example, I started by deciding at the beginning of the year that I would not have my phone on any of our camping trips. I have another YouTube channel here with my friends, it's called Campfire Women, where we do camping vlogs and campfire recipes and stuff like that. And I decided at the beginning of the year that whenever I was on a camping trip with them, that my phone would stay in the car. I would not take it out of the car at all. Something that has helped me with this is the fact that I have a separate camera from my phone. So my phone camera is actually garbage, but I do have like a DSLR camera, so I can leave this in the car and still have the ability to take photos. I know friends who have really nice iPhones and things like that, and so they need to take their phone to use as a camera. And even if they want to like put it on airplane mode or not use it for other things, the fact that it's there with them makes it very hard to make that decision to not use it for social media. From camping trips, I ended up expanding that to all kind of outdoor meetups with my friends. So if I'm going on a hike or if we're going to a coffee shop, no matter what it is, if I'm meeting a friend and I can, I will leave my phone in the car and just be present with them. And I've noticed a positive effect even on my relationships with other people since I've started doing that. So that is the first strategy, which is just to make time away from your phone in general. And the second strategy um, is good for people who need their phone for work or for contacting people or whatever it is. It's to limit your social media availability on your phone. To do that, I have a couple steps. Step one is to really take a step back and think about which apps have the most negative effect on your mental health. And for me, those were TikTok, Instagram, and to a lesser extent, Facebook, um, and to a lesser extent, not even YouTube, but the YT Studio, where I could check people's likes and comments and how many views I got. Some other um, social media apps I found didn't really have a negative effect on me at all, like Pinterest, and the reason is because it's not as interactive. 
so it, the chance that someone's going to leave a comment on my Pinterest is far less compared to someone leaving a comment on my Instagram. So I found that when there weren't comments, it had less of an impact on my social well-being. The worst social media app for me was actually Reddit, which I know surprises a lot of people, but it has to do with the downvoting system, which I find just inherently negative. Can you imagine if everything you said in real life had an upvote and a downvote? And naturally, I think it makes people become very performative, and you start wording your comments and saying your comments, um, and just trying to say things that you think the most people will like, rather than being honest with yourself and with the person who's posting. So I would recommend just taking one day and doing your social media as normal and really thinking about it and taking stock of when you're feeling good, when you're feeling bad, and why. And using that to decide which apps are really the problem and which ones maybe are not so much a problem. Step two is to download some apps that are not problematic, apps that are fun, that maybe don't have a social media element to them. One of my favorites is Webtoons, which is a cartoon app where you can read people's cartoons. When I was first starting, I also enjoyed a lot of word search apps and like just like fun games that aren't difficult, but they're, they're interesting enough that I would want to reach for them. Basically, the plan is just to have an alternative on your phone to those negative apps. So instead of Instagram, I will go to Webtoons, you know? Now we're at step three, and step three is to download an app that will block certain apps at certain times. And I use one that's called AppLock, and it's a very good one, it's free, this is not sponsored, and you can create, I think, up to three free profiles which are like times of the day that you would like to block apps. I don't recommend going cold turkey and deleting all of your social media. That's never worked for me. I always ended up downloading it back in like less than three days. So if you're someone who that's happened to, I do recommend starting with an app block and just starting with one day blocking those problematic apps. Now here is the key. You have to be nice to yourself because if you had an addiction that is as bad as my addiction, you're probably going to fail that first day. I know I did. I ended up disabling the profile and I really just had to check somebody's Instagram stories or I took a nice photo and I really needed to post it right then. And you have to understand that if you have an addiction, it will take multiple attempts to quit and you should not give up. If you disabled the um, app block only once, that means that you went most of the day without checking your social media. So you have to hold on to the little wins and be kind to yourself because this is a process and it will take time. Once you manage to go a full day without checking your social media, um, at that point, check in with yourself and see how you feel. For me, the first day that I managed to not check it completely at all that day, it was a Tuesday, and I found it was the most creative and happy and relaxed day that I had had in a very long time. Once you have successfully managed to go a full day without social media, and you've done that a couple times, then it's a time for step four, which is to increase the amount of blocked time. So currently I have two profiles. I've blocked social media completely on Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Sundays. And I've also blocked it in the mornings until 9.45 a.m. I found that I was personally very vulnerable in the morning to seeing negative things in social media. So if I had just woke up, the first thing I would do is reach for my phone and open Instagram. And if I saw something on there that was like a little bit offensive, a little bit, you know, not good, or just something negative in general, that that would kind of carry through my mood for the rest of the day. Um, and I know a lot of people, they, have, they struggle with this late at night. So if you are someone who can't get to sleep because of social media or it's just really affecting you and giving you anxiety at night, then I recommend blocking it in the evening. And now we're finally at step five, which is, you know, you've increased your block to several days a week and you are really in touch with how you're feeling about social media. And then it's time to decide which apps you really want to keep and which ones you don't. And this was the point in which I deleted TikTok. And it's because I noticed that 
those days that I didn't block TikTok were my happiest days of the week and the days that I was on TikTok were the worst days of the week. I finally came across a post and it was from a nice girl talking about her ADHD and in the comments it was all people saying that people with ADHD are bad people and selfish and that we should like instead of making excuses we should all just pretend we don't have ADHD like we should all be masking all of the time and I just thought that was so horrible and it left me feeling bad about myself for maybe an hour and more so feeling bad about myself I was feeling bad for this young lady who was just trying to post to have other people relate to her and ended up having floods of people telling her how horrible she is and how she needs to just not have a disability or pretend she doesn't have a disability and even though I'd seen many posts like this before I just didn't have the ability to delete it because I had that fear of missing out that I think really compels a lot of us to social media addiction and but now that I had already blocked it several days a week I knew that I could live without it and that's what gave me the ability to finally delete it with the apps I've kept I've noticed that they don't have as much of an effect on me and I'm getting a very good ability to immediately unsubscribe to people who are not making me feel my best and that has been my strategy so I hope this is helpful to somebody out there and I would love to hear your experiences with social media leave a comment which platforms are the worst and why that I'm very interested in so thank you for watching and I will see you next time bye